This is about a, a woman thinking about her old man while he's at work. Because she ain't got time to think about him when he's home. <laughs> from Montgomery when the first line starts out I am an old woman and you hear the voice it's like that's the time when I realized that you could be somebody else in a song you know I really don't know that I ever heard somebody do it in switch gender you know oh I love that um you know I think it's also like House of the Rising Sun or something where you're writing from this other perspective and it's like it's just really freeing to see a songwriter do that and to write from another perspective definitely kind of gave me license to feel like I could didn't have to write everything autobiographical, even though a lot of people want to think everything you write is true. And that is a song that kind of shows you like a great template for how to write a personal song about someone else or from someone else's perspective. I mean, here was a very unhappy older woman who's very fed up with her situation. And it's incredible. It's incredibly believable. And it was written... I don't know how old he was when he wrote that song, but my God. You know, the idea of this young guy, you know, this like 20 year old guy narrating the life of a middle aged woman who, you know, feels older than she is because of everything she's gone through in her life is again, like so profound, right? And so unexpected, but that's a part of his talent is like he could conceive of these characters and the characters aren't fanciful. They're like people that he feels like he could know, you know, they're everyday Americans. And he was able to sort of step inside of these worlds um, and relay them to people, you know, they heard themselves in the songs. Make me an angel that flies from Montgomery. Make me a poster of an old rodeo. Just give me one thing can hold on to to believe in this living is just a hard way to go Angel from Montgomery is a rite of passage any girl that picks up an acoustic guitar must learn Angel from Montgomery and sing it at an open mic just once and then when you hear like Bonnie Raitt sing it too and you know it like she embodies it and it's it's just so cool that he did that because there are so many songs that are like you know the opposite where it's like the woman is the muse and and, and so it's just it's cool that he that he could do that and yeah showed everybody else that they could do it too a mark of this album is prime's deep empathy for other people that are unlike him but that he connects to on a human level um, and Angel Montgomery, I think, is maybe the pinnacle of that on this album. And what I love about this song, too, is I think it is demonstrative of Prine's tacit feminism. I don't think that we think of feminism when we think of Prine, but in this song, he's allowing this woman to speak for herself, right? He's not narrating her experiences through, like, this third-party male perspective. Um, he is stepping into her experiences in a very empathetic way and allowing her, and by extension of that, like women in general speak for themselves. And I just love that about this song. By proxy of his experience growing up with his grandma and his mother, 
um, and how close he was with them, his experience with all of these um, strong women in Western Kentucky growing up, these farmers who grew their own food and made their own clothes and, you know, raised the babies. Like, I think he had a deep empathy for the women around him um, and wanted to convey their experiences. And that comes out in the song in a really powerful way. And I think he said, I have a recording, he, he might have wrote that about his grandmother that he that used to give him sugar to wake up in the morning, two tablespoons of sugar, just shove it in his mouth. I think that's true. Sometimes, not with John, sometimes I think that um, men can't ever write women's characters right, but John did it right in that one. When I was a young girl, well, I had me a cowboy. He weren't much to look at, just a free rambling man. But that was a long time, and no matter how I try, the years just flow by like a broken down dam. The plain spoken way to tell your feelings and then also keep people in the room with you by finding the details that that mean something in the moment like you know the, even the flies in the kitchen you would think how how am i going to sing those words in a song but the thing is if you stay with the intention and the emotion of the song and you're trying to show what this person's life is like you need the details for for everybody to feel like they can be in the room with you like a like a little movie if it's just full of abstractions and just feeling words and, no, and nothing to see, it's kind of hard to see it for yourself or you see yourself inside of that experience. Prine spent a lot of time in the home in Maywood, um, in this multi-generational family. And, you know, so things like the kitchen, things like the radio, I sort of think about this upbringing, this sort of like Norman Rockwell quality of that and how affecting that probably was to Prine because we see these pedestrian images um, that are so affecting and it's because it's universal. We're like, we all have that dad or that grandpa or that hardworking mother, right? And it just illustrates like um, the effectiveness of of writing what you know um, and like leaning on the universality of that. Yeah, that's such a special song and, you know, just kind of again shows his brilliance as a songwriter where he's like talking about flies buzzing and like, the, you know, maybe someone who's like, drinking themselves to death. And then he just opens up with this like beautifully poetic chorus that just seems so effortless. There's flies in the kitchen. I can hear them there buzzing. And I ain't done nothing since I woke up today. How the hell can a person go to work in the morning? Come home in the evening and have nothing to say. Make me an angel that flies from Montgomery. So um, one day, Ed Holstein, John Prine, um, and I believe Fred Holstein was there as well. Um, they were hanging out, and Ed thought maybe he and Prine could come up with a co-write. And Ed when I talked to him, he said, you know, I was thinking something, you know, like a little bit like there's a hole in daddy's arm, you know, like something sort of maybe a little controversial. Um, but, but Prine had this line, I am an old woman. And Ed said, you know, that just didn't strike me at the time. I didn't know where he was going to go with that. Didn't sound like something that I would be interested in. So I passed on it. Um, <laughs> and of course that line, I am an old woman turned into angel from Montgomery. And I think Ed is sort of kicking himself to this day that he passed on it. But yeah, that's sort of the genesis of, of the song. Like Prine believed um, in this first line so much that he wrote the song that became a standard. I had a buddy uh, uh, a long time ago, he heard me sing a hello in there, a song about old people I wrote. He wanted to write a song with me and I like to watch this guy uh, eat. He would eat for hours, you know, you take him to lunch and pay for it just you couldn't believe how much this guy could eat <laughs> but he was a songwriter too you know but so i said well what do you want to write about and uh, he said uh, well, let's write a song about old people and i said but i just wrote hello in there i said that's everything i got to say about it you know <laughs> so i said uh how about um 
a song about a middle-aged woman who feels older than she is. And he goes, nah. <laughs> so <laughs> I went home and wrote Angel for Montgomery. <laughs> He's, he's still eating lunch. Yeah. <laughs>